Uh, we are in a series right now. It's kind of an impromptu series, to be honest with you. Uh, it is about an individual by the name of Gideon. He lived thousands of years ago. He's mentioned in the Old Testament, real-life person, real-life circumstances, and real-life lessons that we can learn in 2024. And even though this story took back, uh, past thousands of years ago, took place thousands of years ago, um, I will say, listen closely, because already for the past two weeks, we've learned a lot from his life. In fact, going back two weeks ago, uh, we learned that God loves the underdog. And then you know what? He calls you a hero. He has hopes in you before you even have hopes in yourself. And the takeaway from that week was that you are an overcomer in Christ. No matter what you are up against right now, what's making you nervous, what's making you scared, you are an overcomer in Christ. Then last week, we talked about the fact that fear and faith usually walk hand in hand. They're kind of cousins. In fact, uh, if you wait in life to step forward and, and have no fear, in other words, you're waiting for fear to leave, you're going to be waiting for a really long time because a lot of times in life, we just need to do it afraid. We just need to step out in faith and do it afraid. Even though your heart is racing and your knees are knocking, here's the reason why last week's takeaway was because God is with you and the battle belongs to him Anyway, so Gideon's story really, really does help us a lot. Now, one thing I realized after last week, um, truth and sales here, I wasn't thinking about preaching on Gideon today, um, and then all of a sudden Jen reminded me, you never told the rest of the story. So I kind of left you guys hanging. Did he win? Did he not win? What's up? So anyway, um, if you didn't you know, here the last two weeks of messages, I'd really encourage you to go to our website and listen to them because they have struck a chord with uh, a lot of people. We've actually received a lot of emails and text messages that said that it really spoke to them. But if you didn't hear it, it's fine. I'll give you a little recap here. Gideon is this underdog, unlikely hero. He's called by God to uh, gather other people of God, the Israelites, and attack the Midianites, who were these very evil people that had occupied the land. And uh, basically, God had him reduce the numbers of his army all the way down to 300, and yet they are going to attack the bad guys who have thousands and thousands of soldiers. It was, it was a very uh, impossible task, you could say. And Gideon had gone down to the camp at God's instruction, the enemy's camp, and listened in to the conversations one night of the enemy, and uh, they were actually scared. In fact, it says in Judges chapter 7, verses 15 onward, it says, then Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation. In other words, what the enemy had dreamt, and they had dreamt they were going to lose the battle. And he bowed down and worshiped God. Uh, he returned to the camp of Israel and called out, get up to his warriors. The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands, dividing the 300 men into three companies, basically 100, 100, and 100. He placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them with torches inside. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout for the the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and the hundred men went with him to the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. Middle watch meant that it was in the middle of the night. Just after they had changed the guard, they blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon, while each man held his position around the camp. All the Midianites ran. And the Midianites basically cried out as they fled. And when the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men, the Midianites, throughout the camp to turn on each other with their own swords. They started to kill each other. The army fled as far as the border. Israel, Israelites from Naphtali, uh, Asher, and all Manasseh were called out, and they pursued the Midianites. So in a nutshell, God does the impossible here that 300 men, including Gideon, 
They, they found that there was a victory and it shouldn't have happened. Like the odds were against them. They were the underdogs, 300 against thousands and thousands and thousands of soldiers. Now, God brought the victory in an awkward and unorthodox way. And so to sum it up, 300 men, they basically, they grab trumpets, all right? Probably didn't look like this one, actually, uh, most likely, they were ram's horns, all right? They had trumpets, and then they had jars, and then they had torches, all right? And using these weapons, quote-unquote weapons, they won the victory. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're like going, where are we going with this today? Because what battles that you are facing um, you're not going to be winning it by blowing a trumpet or throwing a jar on the ground or something like that. Some of you are like, how does this apply to me? Because maybe today you've walked in here, you're watching online, maybe in your living room or another location or whatever, and somebody invited you here, you know, and it's like, hey, come to City First. And you're thinking, okay, I, I have other battles. Maybe, maybe you have an, an addiction. I don't know. You know what I mean? We all have Achilles heels. And Maybe um, your addiction is something like, you know, like to screens, or maybe your addiction is to buying things. In fact, you didn't buy anything from Amazon this week, and the Amazon driver knocked on your door just to make sure you're okay, right? <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> maybe it's a more, I mean, kind of like, like a harder addiction. Maybe it's something that, maybe it's like, you know, closet alcoholic or, or maybe pornography or, or something like that, that you just know, it, it, it like controls you and, and it's hard for you to not, not do it. And maybe that's not it. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe today, deep down on the inside, you have a lot of anxiety. In fact, you're even a little anxious being here today. Maybe being in a big crowd or maybe being at church in general. Um, by the way, if you do struggle with anxiety, and a lot of people do, uh, come back next week for our At The Movies launch, because next week I am speaking on the movie Inside Out 2, and uh, we are going to talk a little bit about anxiety as well as some other things, emotions that we have in our life, and it's going to be super helpful for you and for anybody you bring, which hint, hint, bring people, all right? Um, and we're, you know, we're going to talk about anxiety, but you might be dealing with anxiety today, or maybe some of you are discouraged. Maybe life has just been not what you wanted recently, and it's even hard for you to sometimes get out of bed. Maybe you're battling financial pressure. Maybe it's regret or shame because of some decisions you made, or maybe you're just uh, full of fear, or maybe it's a, a, a health diagnosis. I don't know what it is, but we all got battles, all right? And here's one thing I learned. It took me a long time to learn this. I actually didn't realize this until maybe in the last, I don't know, five to 10 years of my life. But I always imagined that I was in a battle right now and some point I won't have a battle, at least for a season, and I'll get a little rest. I've learned in life, you're always in a battle. Like always. Now, they may not be big battles. It might be a little battle. But like if you're not battling a big battle, maybe you're in a, a season where it's a little bit easier and maybe you're battling laziness now. You see, here's the thing. We all battle all the time. In fact, everybody is fighting a battle. Everyone is, you know? And uh, scripture tells us this. Uh, basically, the scripture says that Gideon took these 300 men and divided them into 300 groups, and he put trumpets in their hands and jars of clay and, you know, like a torch. And this was his odd thousands of years ago as it is to us today, okay? Can I, I, I'm just imagining Gideon comes back from the camp, hearing what the enemy was saying and that they're scared, and he comes back to these 300 men. He's like, okay, boys, get this. We are going to kick some butt today, okay? I'm telling you, the God of the universe is going to give us a victory, and so they're like, all right, let's do this. Let's do this, and then, and then they go, Gideon, what are we going to do? What's the battle plan? And he's like, okay, um, uh, here, here's a trumpet, all right? And, um, and, and, and Larry, you take a jar, all right? And, 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 and I'll tell you what, and you, you, you take this. And I'm sure that at that moment, the guys are like, what? Like, they, they have swords, they, they have armor, they have shields, they have like thousands and thousands of people. 
and you're giving us a jar? What is going on here? One thing is interesting about this. If you read the story, God gave Gideon zero, let me say it again, zero instruction on how to win the battle. If you go back and, 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 and you look at it, he gave instruction for other things, but when it came to like the battle, when Gideon comes back from the enemy's camp and he gets everybody riled up, we're gonna go to war, guys. And at that point, God is silent and he doesn't give any instruction on how to battle. Sometimes God will give you specific instructions in life. And other times, he allows you to do your creative best to accomplish the task at hand. So important because a lot of times we want God to constantly communicate every single detail to us of our life. But at least in my experience and in Gideon's, that's not what he did. God had told Gideon, hey, listen, I'm calling you. You're a hero, even though you don't see yourself as one right now. Uh, number two, you're gonna build an army by reducing the numbers of the army. Went from 32,000 down to 300. And God gave instruction even for Gideon to go down to the enemy's camp and listen in to what the enemy was saying. But then when it actually came time for battle, God's silent. And some of you right now are in a battle and God's instructed you before what to do. He's even maybe given you some verses before. There's been times you read the Bible or you attended City First, you heard a sermon, you're like, that's for me. And now you're in a battle and you're like, hey God, hello, what am I to do here, you know? And sometimes what God wants us to do is to use what we already have which is why he hasn't given us specific instruction for now because what we have in our hand, what we have in our resource, what we have in our mind and in our heart is enough to win the battle because God is with us. I, I really believe that. Now, I'd rather have, you remember the old Batman, like I'm talking the old Batman, old Batman, not the new Batman, but the old Batman, and I'm talking before Michael Keaton Batman, okay, like really old. All right, there was a bat line, okay? Like, like, it'd be great to pick up a phone and it was like you could talk right to God. In that case with Batman, it was to the commissioner or whatever. It would be great to be like, okay, God, what am I gonna do today when I go to work? Okay, give me the battle plan. Great, thanks, boom. Okay, I wish. That's usually not what it looks like. You know, I could just see, I could just see Gideon going, okay, here you go. Um, get the pots, get the torches, get the trumpets. But something about these items... These items were connected and common. I'm gonna define that in a minute here. They were connected and common. First of all, the trumpet. Now again, probably a ram's horn, but the trumpet was a connected instrument of war. And you go, how do you win a battle you know, <laughs> with a trumpet? What do you mean? There were multiple Old Testament stories where God brought victory to his people simply because they blew a trumpet and shouted. The most famous one, Jericho, right? In fact, before Gideon, there was Jericho. Gideon and those 300 men knew about Jericho. They heard it from their dad, their grandpa, their great grandpa. And basically what happened in Joshua chapter six, verse 20, it says this. It says, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So there's a city, the wall fell down and everyone charged straight in and God's people took the city. All because of this right here, all because of a trumpet. So guess what? When Gideon is like, grab the trumpet, you know what he's reminding those 300 men of? He's reminding them of an instrument of war that God had used before to get a victory that seemed impossible. It was connected to the past. Let me ask this question. Has God ever helped you before? Then he will do it again. You see, if God helped you before, then he'll do it again. This is kind of, you could say, why Gideon was in, you know, said, we're going to blow a trumpet. Why? Again, God didn't say to blow a trumpet. God didn't give instruction of this. Instead, 
Gideon remembered what won the victory before, and that was blowing the trumpet, shouting in worship. And guess what? He's like, we're gonna do that again. It worked before, God answered the prayers before, he'll do it again. Kind of reminds me of this. We all have a file. Now, it may not be a physical file, but it is a mental file. Some of you have heard me talk about this before, but it's kind of a God file. These are moments that we remember that God has saved us. He's rescued us. He has given us victory over the enemy. He has given us breakthrough, even when we didn't see it coming. It's a God file. And many times we forget what God has done, but there's a God file. Has God ever given you a victory before? Then guess what? He will again, and you'll have another testimony to put into your God file, right? There's a God file. Unfortunately, we also have a devil file. These are the times that the enemy has tried to take us out. These are the times that maybe even we've made mistakes. But guess what? All of the mistakes that we've made when we come to Jesus and say, forgive me, he washes us white as snow, the Bible says. He removes our sin from us as far as the east is to the west. So guess what? In the devil file, there's nothing left, right? Because you've been forgiven. You've forgiven for all that you've done. But on top of that, on top of that, guess what? There were times that the enemy sent you temptations. He sent you distractions. He, he even tried to take you out and, oh, maybe there was a season you gave into it or whatever else. But guess what? You're here today, which means the devil has had no victory. Does that make sense? But what happens whenever we come up against the battle? We forget about our God file. And all we do is, think about the devil file. We think about, oh man, this one's going to take me out. This giant is bigger than any of the other ones that I've encountered before. This problem, this situation, I've never faced it. And so we forget, we forget the faithfulness of our God. It says in Psalms 103, one of my favorite Psalms actually, it says this, praise the Lord, my soul. Here's the psalmist talking to his soul. And sometimes we got to do this, all right? What does he say? Forget not. Turn to the person next to you and say, forget not. Forget not what? All his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems you, your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. In other words, what is the psalmist saying? The psalmist is saying, you got two files you can look at right now when you're in this battle, but you know what? I'm gonna encourage my soul to open up my God file and to say, I remember when the Lord saved me. I remember when he rescued me. I remember when he helped me, he gave me strength. He gave me favor. Forget not, forget not these things. You know, next week, um, in this week, I have an assignment for you regarding this. And here's your homework, all right? I know some of you are like going, oh, we just started school. I, need more. I don't need more homework, okay? This is gonna be easy, okay? Um, here's your homework. Sometime this week, please don't forget to do this. Sometime this week, I want you to sit down with your note app on your phone or with a physical piece of paper or maybe a journal or something like that. And I want you to write down in 15 minutes, just 15 minutes, even set a timer, 15 minutes, I want, to write down, I want you to write down all the ways and all the times that the Lord has helped you. The Lord has helped you. The Lord came to your rescue. The Lord did something for you. Just write it down. In fact, this is the thing. It won't be an exhaustive list. There's no way. You're gonna need you like years to write down all the things that God has done for you, but just take 15 minutes. And in that 15 minutes, you are going to be reminded of the God of the universe that loves you and that is on your side. He is on your side and just write it down. Remind yourself of the time that he gave you a financial breakthrough. He brought you that friend that you needed. He gave you that little God wink when somebody, you know, just helped you in a way that you didn't expect. Whatever it was, just write all those things down and then take in that 15 minutes and just thank him for it. Say, thank you, God. Now, I know some of you are like, well, maybe you're new to faith or maybe you maybe even aren't a person of faith and you're like, well, God hasn't helped me. I mean, really, you know? 
Well, you're here today, right? That's a big one. Um, you're safe. Those times where somebody blew a red light and almost hit you but didn't, was that God? In fact, sometimes I'll talk to people who don't know God and they'll be like, well, you know what? I don't know if God's really helped me. Kind of insinuating like they're a self-made man or a self-made woman. I'll say, okay, well then I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer. God, from this point forward, I don't want you to protect me. I don't want you to bless me. And I don't want you to give me favor or prosper me from this point forward because I got it. I've got it. And whenever I say that, the person's like, well, I'm not going to pray that. Why? Because deep down inside, you know, don't you? You know there's a God who is helping you even if you're not connected in relationship with him, right? Deep down on the inside. So here's the thing. Gideon used what was connected to the past that had brought victory before. And those 300 men, they remembered Jericho, the story of Jericho. And they're like, okay, if God did it then, he'll do it again. But then... Then Gideon said, get something that's, that's common, common. Like these are common things in the camp at that time. In fact, where all of the different tribes of Israel were at the time, there were probably thousands of jars and there were thousands of these torches. And back then they didn't have electricity. So this is how they got around at night. And back then this is how they cooked and how they kept food. They didn't have refrigerators and things like that. So, so again, something that is common. What is the point here? And that is this. God will help you with your current battle by using what you already have resource with, what already is in your hand. You know, again, God many times asks people, what do you already have? What have I already given you? You know, Moses when he was uh, being charged to lead the three million Israelites out of Egypt, um, God said, what's in your hand? And he had, he had a shepherd's staff. He had a rod. And, and God said, throw it down. It turned into a snake. It was like this miracle moment. But he already had it in his hand. And when we face the enemy, we tend to fixate on what we don't have rather than what we do have. We're sitting there and like, oh man, I wish I had 32,000 men, Gideon was probably thinking. I, I wish I had swords. I wish I had shields. But instead, Gideon's like, well, what do I have? I don't have 32,000 men. I don't have swords. I don't have armor. I don't have shields. What do I have? I have pots. <laughs> I have some torches. Okay, that'll work. That'll work, he's thinking to himself. Repeat this after me. You ready? I have what I need. Ready? I have what I need. Okay, one, two, three. I have what I need right now. You have the talent that God's given you. You have the relationships, the positive ones that God has given you. You have the resource that God has given you. You have the mind that God has given you. You have the verbal skills, the writing skills, the intuition, the discernment, all the things that God has given you. And unfortunately, what we do is we're always like, if I had blank, then everything would be okay. If I just had more money, right? If I had a nicer car, if I had a spouse that really understood me, if I had more smarts, if I had better resources, then I could win the battle. But here's the tr truth. The truth is, is what you have right now is enough because here's the reason why. God is with you. Those things aren't gonna help you win your battle. God wins your battle. And he's already given you what you need. In fact, it says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, for his divine power has bestowed, kind of an old English term there, but on us, absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. In other words, you already have what you, what you need. You already have what you need. I know you feel um, like it's not sufficient. I know you feel like it's not enough. I know you feel like it's, you need more to be able to do what you need to do to win this battle. But in reality, you have the things 
that are common but powerful, things like prayer, things like the word of God, which is prevailing, things like worship, which helps you overcome, you have your church that is surrounding you. You have talents and abilities on loan from heaven. You have God with you. You don't need much more than that, to be real honest with you, if anything more than that. You have what it takes. And so all that you need to do is realize that the pots and the torches you already have will bring you the victory. This week has been a crazy week. I'm actually living this sermon as I'm preaching it to you right now. You say, they go, really? Yeah, I wasn't supposed to speak today. In fact, at 6.15 this morning, Jen woke me up, who was supposed to preach today, and Jen goes, I'm sick, I can't preach. So at 6.15 this morning, I realized I'm preaching in front of y'all. And you know what that is? I'm like... Okay, let's see what I got here. I mean, we got, okay, all right, we're gonna do this, okay. Uh, and has he helped me before? He's helped me before. This is what you're seeing right now, literally, literally, okay? <laughs> I mean, literally. Man, Jen owes me. Jen owes me so much, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> so this morning at 6.15, I uh, get on my little computer and I, I start texting out the group, change of plans, Jer's preaching today, I'll get you my notes soon, <laughs> okay? But on top of it, it was a crazy week because uh, maybe some of you saw on my Instagram or social media, but um, we took Paxton in, our little guy, he's 12 years old, and for those of you that are maybe visiting here today, um, he's our uh, third son, our youngest son, and he has special needs, he has Down syndrome, and he went into uh, the children's hospital up at Madison for a, an outpatient patient surgery. But it was, it was, I mean, it was enough where, I mean, they had to put him fully under. And, I mean, it was a full OR moment. You know, the whole crew is there, the anesthesiologist, the surgeon, the whole nine yards. And, and um, surgery went well, thankfully. And, and uh, about, uh, you know, 30 minutes or so after he got out of recovery and had woken up, um, they brought a wheelchair and, and uh, we ended up starting to make our way down to our car and we got in the car and the craziest thing happened and, and Paxson has never done this before, Jen and I have never experienced this before in our entire lives, but uh, we got maybe about five minutes away from the hospital and all of a sudden Paxson became extremely agitated and fortunately he's um, in some ways uh, he has communication issues, and so he can't tell us what's going on, and sometimes I don't think he understands everything that's going on, and he starts becoming very agitated, and he starts screaming, I mean, like, screaming bloody murder and saying, help, 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 and, like, and hitting himself on the head and stuff, and, and, and he doesn't do this. He's never done this before, and even as I'm saying it, it sounds very disturbing. You should have been there, literally. It was one of the most disturbing, probably, things I've experienced definitely with Paxton, um, but maybe in the top 10 in my life. I mean, literally very disturbing. And Jen and I didn't know what to do, and we're trying to calm him down, and we're trying to ask him what hurts or what's wrong, and he is just losing it, like screaming. And, and, and I'm in, so loud, I, I'm having trouble driving, I can't think straight. Um, you know, we're trying to figure out what to do. We start praying. Uh, Jen goes, we need to turn around and go back. And so I start, I whip around and I'm hitting all the five o'clock traffic. It's taking us forever getting back to the children's hospital. But even when we got there, I'm like, well, we, it's just like, we can't go walk right back in and go right back up to the OR. You know what I mean? It's like, there's all these protocols, these things you have to do. And so we're calling the, you know, the on-call doctor and all this stuff. And, and, and literally Jen's trying to talk to the doctor as packed and is screaming. It was chaos, like disturbing chaos. Never seen him act like this ever in his life. Keeps hitting himself and all these things. And uh, I prayed for wisdom. I'm like, God, give us wisdom. What are we to do right now? And so Jen and I are praying. We're praying for him. I'm trying to keep my head centered on the fact that God is listening. He's in that moment, even though it's chaos. And, and I'm just like, God, you gotta, you gotta rescue this. What's, what's happening here? And so what did I do? I began to do things that I was connected to in the past. I mean, I began to pray. And I began to say, God, you're, you're bigger than what's going on right now. I can't understand what Paxson is trying to communicate. He can't communicate it to us. 
but God, you've answered prayers before. You're gonna answer this, so I was connected. But you know what? I also did something that was kind of common, something that you say, well, it's pretty common. Well, one thing that Paxton loves is um, he loves French fries, <laughs> specifically Chick-fil-A French fries. And so I Googled real quickly, where's the nearest Chick-fil-A? And, uh, and so we started driving towards the Chick-fil-A. And I mean, like he, he loves fries, Chick-fil-A fries, I think more than he loves his mom and dad, literally. I mean, he loves. <laughs> so I started to reach for something common to him. I'm starting to use my creativity here. You see it? Okay, you know what I'm doing here? I'm reaching for something connected. God, you can help in this situation. I have faith to believe you've answered prayers before you'll answer this prayer. But then at the same time, I'm trying to use creativity, fries, okay? And so we end up driving to Chick-fil-A. I run in, I get a little, you know, nugget meal with fries and all that kind of stuff. I bring out the fries and I'm like, Paxton, fries. He doesn't want them. I'm like, oh, this is serious. But we got in the car and we started to head back to the hospital. And by this point, the doctor was on the phone with Jen and all this stuff. And, and all of a sudden he took a couple of bites of fries and whatever else. Within 15 minutes, it was the weirdest thing, within 15 minutes, it had been 35, 40 minutes of crazy. Within 15 minutes, all of a sudden, he began to just calm down and he was himself again. It was almost like I watched prayer just begin to cover him and he just began to you know and, and again it was it was amazing like honestly it's another it's another piece of paper in my God file does that make sense and I don't know what it was I don't know if there's pressure building up I mean there, there's all kinds of medical things that I I don't know all I know is, is this I prayed I was connected to the God that answered prayers at the same time, I tried to use creativity, you know, and do the things that God had already given me the tools to do. And that's exactly many times how our battles look like. 